Hey everyone, welcome to Old Chum's Geek Chat. I'm your host, Jay Tank, and joining me as ever is my co-host and our resident super geek. It's always sunshine and rainbows when he's around, Colin Coftree. Yay! Rainbow! Oh, I like the little ah at the end. Yeah. The jazz alphabet, huh? <laughs> jazz hand moment for you there, Jay. <laughs> How are you today, Colin? Oh, wonderful, thank you. Yeah, it's good to see you, man. Yeah, it's right. good to see you, bud. So, this is it, episode three. Should we get on with it? Yeah, let's, let's go. do it, dude. So before we get into the big, you know, a couple of smaller topics to discuss. Well, not smaller, but just they're not going to take as long. So the first one is um, that the new Matt Reeves Batman movie has Ooh, moved. Yeah. Um, it's moved its release date from June 2021 to October tw- the first 2021, which is not that big of a move. At least it's not into the next year. Um, yeah. But obviously because of the current state of things and. I suppose production has been put on hold, maybe stuff like that. I don't think they needed more time. I think they were all right, but I think it's just that they needed to move and shift things. The the funny thing about this, though, mm. is that by moving it to that date, the new Batman movie is coming out one week before the Uncharted movie, which is not great for Uncharted. Because, no. you know, normally, I suppose, a movie will have like a 50% drop off in their second week or something like that. But if Batman turns out to be awesome, then it might not. Which I think not, it will. Uh, yeah, it could be. So then it wouldn't have that, which for the Uncharted movie is bad news because a lot of the audience, I guess, that would watch things like Batman would be the same kind of people who would probably be interested in something like Uncharted. Um, so, uh, I mean, what do you think will happen there? Do you think that they'll have to move Uncharted or do you think... Batman moment because it's not really great for, for Batman either to be so close to another big movie and non child will probably be a big movie. It's something but, I think a lot of people will it, see. But will it be big? I mean, I, I, I think I still don't think. I mean, Uncharted is a you know massive game and everyone knows it, but mm. well, not everyone knows it, but most people know it. And I, I guess, that, but, but generally, video games don't translate necessary to move they, they and, haven't and the audience right. don't come with it do they because a lot of video people stay at home but out of them all i think uncharted is one that people have been wanting isn't it yeah definitely i mean it's i mean it's been development hell for years hasn't it in terms yeah. of not actually getting started i mean all the way from when they were talking about nathan fillion doing the main role and that would have been wicked wanting, right yeah yeah so um i mean the key thing is Sony have got plenty of time to move the day, haven't they? <laughs> so if they yeah. if they if they start getting worried, they might move it. You know, um, I think it's it's so hard to predict what's going to happen over the next, you know, six to eighteen months because it really depends on how quickly things start getting back to normal. If they do get back to normal, and what the the shunt is, you know, there could be a lot of films clawing around that time by the by the actual. You know, as we get closer to it, there might be even more films trying to get those could, sort of Could spaces. even be another move, right? Yeah. So. The interesting thing, though, um, and I can't remember, I read something the other day, um, and it was one of the production staff, I can't remember if it was Tim Sogfa or someone like that, um, mm. who did put a little uh, post online after the Batman movie move to say that October fits the mood better for the movie. Well, if it's got a bit of long Halloween in it or something like that, that'd be perfect, right? Right. Yeah, the, it, it, I've heard things about that before as well. Yeah, little winters, right? Mm. So that's quite cool. Okay. Um, the other bit of uh, news that came out, is a little bit of sad news, is so artist uh, Hector Garrido, um, he passed away on April 19th. And Hector is best known for doing all the artwork for the, um, the G.I. Joe an action force action figure packaging um he was active as an artist from 1965 until 1995 wow. um, he passed away peacefully in his sleep at home um but yeah that's that's quite sad um you know because obviously he's done a lot of iconic work over the years i think most people especially people who grew up in the 80s who collected those toys um will all be quite familiar with his artwork um, and that was also on the file cards for the figures as well. Yeah, well, I mean, that artwork inspired a lot of the characterizations that came out in the cartoons and the comics, didn't it? Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. Day, you know? 
Yeah. I mean, this is the thing, you know, back then in the 80s, the, those, the toy art was the thing that really made so many of these, you know, these things that we've come to love as classics, you know, because mm. of the artists that, that came up with just concepts, really, and putting ideas down. So, yeah, I mean, that's fantastic stuff he did. Yeah, so, so sad news there. Mm. Right, so anyway, on to the Big Kahuna. The Big Kahuna? It's time for the Big Kahuna. Big Kahuna burger. I love a tasty burger. <laughs> and a lovely, tasty conversation with you, Jay. So what are you going to stick on my plate? So this, this week is about um, Disney Plus editing movies so i think we spoke about it last week where we mentioned that they had edited uh, splash a little bit where they covered daryl hammer's butt with uh, with an extra piece of hair which doesn't look great either already i'm against this yeah right why would you cover a butt right and yeah. and butt so out, please. the other thing is i mean you know butt out disney a lot of these movies butt out disney <laughs> All these movies are Disney movies, right? So things like the Marvel ones, for example. And um, and I noticed it last night, because me and, uh, and my wife are, are going through all the Marvel um, Cinematic Universe movies from oh, the beginning. Are you? Yeah. Are and, you joining uh, in with the Mighty Marvel Mixes rewatch for the podcast? It, well, it wasn't, because that, it's just because we were sitting there one evening looking for a... Uh, um, and I knew you were doing that, but we were looking for something to watch. And then I said, uh, should we just start with the uh, MCU ones? And she's like, yeah, cool, let's do it. So... Um, yeah. We did um, Captain America: First Avenger last night, oh. and um, yeah, there's a there's a bit where the word "bitch" is is changed, mm. right? And I thought to myself, okay, well, Disney Plus goes up to PG thirteen, and these movies were all released, and I think that they are all PG thirteen anyway. And my understanding is you're allowed at least like one f bomb or something like that in a PG thirteen movie. Now, <laughs> there's two things I have to say about this. One is mm. Uh, it, it bugs me and I know like I know Disney Plus is just another network and if you saw something on TV they'd be like hey mother flipper which also annoys me when they do that anyway right yeah. but, but I understand why they do it and um, it, but I don't understand why they do it after Watershed that I, I never no. get that um, but with these I mean I don't understand why Disney can't just put like a, a parental lock or something like that on it where you can have the f- normal version of the movie or, you know, and then you have a code, for example, like you have with, with other services. I, uh, I think, or, or I otherwise, think the standard is just this version. I and think, it's just, Jay, it's, it's, all down, it's all down to the brand. It's all down to the fact that they, Disney is for the whole family. And if they've got a product out there that's, that's got Disney on it, whatever the content is within it, it needs to be available to anybody because it's got the Disney name on it. Anything in that box, in that Disney box, has got to be accessible. I understand for the whole family. that, but at the same time, these, are, you know, as I say, they've made the service a PG thirteen service, and you release these things in the cinema at that rating. But then the other thing is, and I know this could be, as I call it, a slippery slope argument, right? Hmm. And that is always taking things. Um, as the worst possible thing that could happen. So it's like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, if, if they do this, then this will happen, and it just gets worse and worse. But we have seen this in the past. So let's say as time goes on and all the Disney products, you know, say Disney makes it so that you only watch Disney stuff on Disney, right? Mm. So you can't then go to Amazon or Netflix and watch them, right? Yeah. So then we've also got physical media dying out, so then we get to the point where um, it becomes the only way I can see this movie is like this, but not it will never be the version that I've seen in the cinema, right? Mm-hmm. Now, this has happened with physical media. So my favourite horror movie is An American Werewolf in London, right? So, <laughs> I'm sorry I called you Meatloaf Jack. So there's a, there's a, when that came out on DVD, um, when they had the 25th anniversary, they yeah. kind of remastered part of it, right? And there's a scene in that movie, uh, I, you've seen it, so where, uh, where Jack and David are in the living room, right, late at night. Yeah. And now they've added music, Jack's music, 
right? But that music was never there before. And I always found that scene a lot creepier without music because everything was dead silent, right? Mm. But now the only version you can buy is that version, the music, yeah. right? So we've also seen it with Star Wars. Well, I was going to say, so, as Star Wars fans, we're pretty much used to it. And on Disney Plus, they change stuff for the uh, Disney. Right, to make release. it terrible. So, <laughs> yeah, some nice, <laughs> some nice fans have gone out there and made these specialised versions, okay? Yeah. But you cannot go and buy an official, you know, uh, 4K... Um, original. Uh, yeah, remastered version of the original cut. No. And, and there's... As they've had it now, you'll never be able to get it. That's it. That's it. And, and I, apparently George has said something like, you can't release the original version if you buy Star Wars or whatever, something like that. But this is the slippery slope. So what if you get to the point where the only way you can watch these Marvel movies is like that, unless you've already got them on physical media, and then at some point when physical media dies, you won't be able to buy anymore, and then you watch it in the cinema, and I know it's just something small. Someone says fuck or something once, but... Mm. You know, you Language. watch it in cinema and then you go to watch it at home and they and they say flip or you know, or yeah. something I, something I think, else that sounds stupid dangerous. and then they'll still do the other movement. No, I, I get what you're saying, Jay. Uh, I mean I'm not, not too I mean I was quite cynical with Disney Plus in the first place anyway. Mm-hmm. Because I wasn't well, yeah. I mean I, I wasn't even expecting half the stuff to be on there. Like I couldn't believe the X Men film was on there. Um, not because I thought, not in America. Well, aren't they? Oh. oh, they're on Hulu now, aren't they? No, in America, I think that there's still distribution rights elsewhere, so oh. they will go on there. But even here, we don't have all of them. Like, First Class isn't on there, but Days of Future no. Past is. And you yeah. know why? And because Wolverine's on there. It'd be, it'd be the scene in First Class where they walk in and Wolverine's there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, what, what are they going to do with that scene? Because that's the joke. Exactly. Right? But, but I guess my point really was that... Um, the, the more dangerous thing is going to be what this might mean is that things like the Disney ownership will affect how films are actually made rather than changing them when they go onto their channel. It's because the, the branding of things like Marvel and Star Wars aren't exactly the level of kids friendly that, say, the, the main Disney stuff is. Um, will that influence and stop them putting in the odd swear word, reducing the violence? changing the you know like will, will we never get that sort of darker age of star wars that we've been craving because let's face it mandalorian isn't it's not what i thought it was going to be no. and I, I still love mandalorian but i thought it was going to be more adult oh well and, i mean like anakin getting his limbs chopped off and screaming i mean yeah. i haven't watched that yet so i don't know what that's like but um no, I haven't. but you know will we ever get anything like that again and yeah. actually I, I, I will need to go and check my Blu-rays of Captain America and Iron Man. But there's a couple of bits in it where there was like a punch and stuff like that. And I was like, is that a cut? Because it didn't quite look right. Now, I don't know that that's, that's, that's true. It might just be me looking yeah, up. I, I don't know them well enough. You know, but, but I was kind of like, I'm going to have to check that because it, it looked weird. And I was like, they kind of, it was almost like the, the, punch happens but if you imagine they cut the connection of the punch yeah and i was like have they done that or i mean mean, looking this up online just before um i did see apparently they've cut some bits out of simpsons have they and i'm just like why like what the hell come on man you know i mean i mean again personally i wouldn't go to disney plus to watch the simpsons because i I, if it wasn't for the fact (laughs) it's on there do you know what i mean because it to me Simpsons is so not anything to do with the values of Disney. You know, they're, they're worlds apart in my mind. Mm. And so I wouldn't expect to be able to watch The Simpsons on there, let alone... And this is what I think the big fundamental flaw with Disney Plus is, the fact that it's Disney. If it was, right. like, you know, like, like you said, there were sections of it, like, like the, the different sections were actually petitioned off and it was under a broader thing, like D, it was called something like D plus or something like that, so that it it wasn't the exact Disney brand, so you could then branch off and do what you want. Like for instance, you could have the choice of the like the default is the edited version of the film, but if you wanted to press A or whatever, you get the unedited version if you're an adult kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so the, so the, but I but I'm never going to do that with the Disney Plus brand it seems. So 
this is why you know I'm you know gutted that we haven't got Hulu over here because yeah. that seems to be I think that's the strategy they're going to put the older aim stuff or the things that aren't for the Disney audience onto Hulu and I don't think they'll put the Marvel films on there but like you'll get well, things then, like Logan will probably go on there well, the Netflix stuff will go on there eventually once it's yeah. finished that yeah yeah that stuff and you know so that's where all that sort of stuff will oh go. you would never get that kind of daredevil or punisher or anything like that on disney plus well, no way and, and and you again i wouldn't want to watch it on there if it was a version that disney wants you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah there's no fighting <laughs> yeah. there's no blood nerf guns <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's just a weird thing and, and you know it, it was uh I'd heard that they were doing it, and then once I was watching the movie, and I was like, they, they cut out the word bitch. I was like, what? Like, that's yeah. weird, because you, cause you see his mouth say it. You see his mouth go, bitch. and then he said something <laughs> else. And I was like, huh? It's and I like, said to my uh, wife, I was like, did they just cut out bitch? She goes, yeah, I think they did. Like, oh. uh, Adventures of Babysitting, which is also on Disney+. Plus. Uh, I haven't watched it on Disney+, Plus, but I remember it being on ITV when we were kids, right. and they, they changed the don't fuck with the babysitter. She said, don't fool with the babysitter. <laughs> and you can oh. really see the mouth go. <laughs> well, that's what they're going to have on here, right? I'm going to have to look, look for that bit. <laughs> uh, I mean, first of all, problems, she was right? But... Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, I, you know, I get your sense of anger there, Jay. You know, we, we want to see the original films, how they were intended by the creators. And I think that's two different things. Like with George Lucas, it's his product, it was his vision. If he didn't want people to see the version, then that's really up to him. But if it's a, a company changing something after the fact that's got nothing to do with the people that actually the creator of it, then I think that's a very different story. And I you know, I'm obviously not for that. But, but then but then and, they shouldn't show it. What you say is right <laughs> as well, because if because of that they start going, Well, you know, we want to have it on Disney Plus, so you need to tone it all down a bit. Yeah, you're because that's because now I mean, all of these things weren't made with Disney Plus in mind. Now everything will be. Yeah. So let's see if it will affect what happens. You know, yeah. I mean, already, like, we've had, you know, the uh, the new Doctor Strange film. You know, they, they changed directors and, you know, potentially it could be some of that, you know, because maybe it's getting too dark. We've got you know? Black Widow coming out, and I'd expect Black Widow to be quite a... Uh... Slightly dark and violent. Well, you'd expect it to be more sort of Winter Soldier on yeah, that level, yeah, yeah, but worse, yeah. wouldn't you? You know, yeah. so. And that's what I want. When I when yeah. I think Black Widow, and it's going to be like you know when she was an operation stuff. I want, to, and also the way that she's talked about her past in the um, the MCU beforehand. You yeah. know, I, I I want I want to see well, what this is, she's this, talking about. This is the fundamental issue with Marvel. Let's, let's talk about Marvel here, being owned by Disney and the fact that the comics and the characters, just because they're comic characters in the Marvel Universe, doesn't mean that those comics were ever aimed at kids. No. Like Black Widow comics and Punisher comics and that were aimed at adults. You know, kids didn't read them. I mean, yes, when Punisher first appeared in Spider-Man, obviously it was kids, but, you know, anything since, I don't know, the late 80s has been aimed at adults because, one, kids don't read comics anymore. Um, and it's, and it's mainly adults that buy them. Yeah, but you know, like the comic I'm going to talk about later is a black label comic. It's aimed at adults, so this is this is going to be the issue. The, the fundamental elements of the characters that you know that, that Marvel own shouldn't be Disneyfied, really, or not uh, not not to give a true sense of the character anyway. Yeah, totally agree. All right, guys. So the most important thing is like, what do you think? Comment below or maybe leave a message on our group and uh, we'll move on to the next topic. Yeah. So the next topic is um, <laughs> that uh, there's a new Green Hornet movie that's going to be going to production um, at Paramount. The question is, Green Hornet, can this work for modern audiences? I mean, the character is not exactly one that i see people flocking out to go and watch no it's it's a i mean and the also it has had an a, not that recent but a, an update and it, yeah. with a different direction they made it a comedy-ish they they so they changed what it was to make it more relevant for 
a modern audience. But the Green Hornet was a bit of a comedy, wasn't it? Because it was out in the 60s alongside Adam West's Batman, right? Well, yeah. But, I know it's a comic but, before but, that. Yeah, but it was. But the, even that TV series was never aimed to be a comedy, though. It was, yes, it was a little bit in line with the campiness of of Batman and, and you know, the nod, nod and wink to adults. But it was played straight. Um, right. And... You know Bruce Lee, and you know it was it was it was more serious than Batman, definitely. You know, a hundred percent on that. I would say that, like anything, if you've got a good vision and you've got an idea, anything can be updated and, and made to work. But it really depends on who's running it. I mean, I don't know anything about the background of this, so I don't know who's the director, who's what company. I've even... got one yet, and so. Again, if this is a studio decision, let's release it because they've got the rights. Let's make a that film. That's what's happening. Yeah, they've got the rights. Then that's not the best start from, or you know, you, it's much, you know, like again, talking about Seth Rogen again. What what he's done with um, the boys and with Preacher as a producer, um, you know, these are great comic titles, and I thought unfilmable to be honest. But he's brought something, and he's changed them. He's not made them exactly as they were, and he's given them a different vision, uh, and he's got them to work. But that's because he wanted to put those on the screen. No one was asking him to put the boys on the screen. <laughs> um, and but so, we're glad he did. And we're glad he did. Um, whereas with the, the Green Hornet, yeah, I, I can't really imagine that most young filmmakers these days are thinking, right, the one character... Because also, ah, he, he's yeah. not really part of the collective cultural you know building box of anyone sort of i mean again like you're saying but the most sort of relevant thing of him being in was in the 60s and it wasn't even that big then you know it was totally eclipsed by what else that was happening so has he got an audience anyway is there anyone feeling nostalgic for the green hornet and that's the question and what do you do with a character like kato you know like who do you get because he was like his sidekick because in those Side. days it's like oh like yeah the asian sidekick do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like his, you need yeah, to make yeah, that kind of butler relevant to modern and, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So, it's, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not something I'm excited about, I can tell you that. But <laughs> again, if, if you're not, oh. you're cool with it. No, I, I'm surprised not really. to not see a row of Green Hornet comics right behind you, dude. Well, I've got my Green Hornet pants on, but I'm not showing you those. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a bit of a sting in it. Uh, <laughs> so, right, <laughs> right, so yeah, so what do you guys think about Green Hornet? Would you like to see Green Hornet? Can it work in modern times? Let us know what you think. Yeah, right, on, and on, the, on next... the thing rolling down the bottom, yeah? On, on, yeah, on this address <laughs> right here. <laughs> I did it last week. When you said there'll be nothing here where you wiggle your hands, I did it. I, uh, I put something you're, in. You're a good man, Charlie Brown. <laughs> right, so. Um, and on to the next thing. Now, this is something you alerted us all onto on the uh, Facebook group. Uh, free comics! Free comics! We free comics. Free Tell comics. us about them, Colin. So, basically, there's there's two routes to get into free comics at the moment. Uh, one is Marvel Unlimited, and um, they are doing a free week. So, if you subscribe, so you've still got to subscribe. Uh, you can cancel it after a month or after a week or whatever, but if you subscribe, they're giving you a free week, and so um, you can get a hold of some comics on there, and obviously that's free. But um, the more long, sustainable way of getting pretty much the same free comics are going to Comixology, where they have got um, a few key Marvel titles, and there's a list of them. It's things like um, the, the Winter Sol Soldier story by... Uh, Captain America run by uh, Brew Baker, uh, sort of relevant ones. There's some Black Widow ones, you know, things that talk to the MCU and stuff. And they've got trades on there, and they are free to download. Awesome! And wow. now you keep them. So oh wow, yeah, that's so good. So, so that's better. That, so so get on there, and there's it's. I think it's under an essentials list. If you go onto the comments, you can look at it. So definitely check that out because there's some excellent books on there really worth checking out they've got like dark phoenix and stuff like that as well some wow. x-men ones so they've got some classic stuff some classic and what stories. is that just a so that's a you sign up um no, and you, for, for comicsology all, all you need is an account 
Um, oh, okay, so, that's it. So, is that so a paid com- account or like normally? No. Or? So, so Comicsology is basically it's owned by Amazon. Yep. It's basically yeah, yeah. how how you buy digital comics. So all you've got to do is have an Amazon account, and that's uh, cool. and and you just click on it and download it. Nice. Brilliant. So that's so, so that's good. wicked. The other things on there which are available are on the DC's website is uh, they're like must read issues, and they are key issues of different of different stories throughout DC, mostly from the last probably twenty years, and it's like the first issues of key stories. So again, not as good a deal in that you're not getting the whole story. But if you wanted to find out about certain comics or just test to see if it's something you're interested in. You can get on DC, DC dot, DCcomics.com and you can download the first issues on there. So there's there's a selection of stuff. There's some great stuff. There's Watchmen, there's some Batman stuff, Superman, Justice League. So, again, just a great way to, to taste stuff, see what you're interested in, particularly for you guys that aren't really comic collectors. I think it's, it's just a good, good opportunity way to, to try stuff. Try it yeah. out, yeah. No and, way. hey, everyone's sitting at home, so <clears throat> you might as well read some comics. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, that's a nice segue into um, Colin's, Colin's Comic Colin Corner. Corner. I do love that little dance theme tune. Um, and the little dance. Well, obviously the little dance. That's a highlight, I, I can imagine. <laughs> so, Jay, I tell want us. to tell you about a particular comic i've been reading it's a three-part story called harleen now this is uh, a black label so yes it's an adult aimed comic from dc comics so dc comics have started a new black black label series of comics and they're slightly bigger than the normal format and normally a little bit more expensive prestige sort of uh, things they're normally a bit bigger so like for instance this is a three issue mini series but each issue is about 60 pages of content Oh wow! Okay. So, so a little bit pricey, but really nice collection. So you know, looks great on your bookshelf. That type of stuff. Um, and probably the most famous book in you know out of the DC Black Label is the one I was we hoping, see. The, I was the hoping to see it sat there in the background or something like that. No, unfortunately, I bought it digitally because oh. obviously <laughs> lockdown. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, true. <laughs> so, so, uh, so I got it on digital, but I, I must admit, I, I'm hoping they're going to release like some kind of absolute collection of it, and if they do, I'll definitely buy that. Because to be honest, the main thing about this is it, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. So I know you're going to be flicking up loads of pictures that I've sent you, Jay, from it. Oh, so, yeah. um, but this is uh, written and drawn by uh, now. He's got a great name. Um, I think it's. Stepan Sajic, but it might not be, but the <laughs> writing of the name is here. So I'm oh, yeah, sure. yeah, totally right here. Yeah, right it's here. totally here. So um, that's the name. Now, on the I cover. first came across this guy. He did a, he did a run on Aquaman. Right. Um, now, that was Aquaman Underworld. So that was issues. I'm going to tell you because I'm I am super organised. Issues 25 to 30 of the Aquaman 2017 series, um, and straight away his art is just phenomenal. He's just an amazing, amazing art. He's got a real sort of it's a cross between sort of a realistic, but also looks slightly animated. In that um, it's really crisp as well, and like you could you could imagine it moving as a as a really like top level cartoon. Not That'd like a crappy good. one. I know you appreciate good animation, Jay. Um, so basically, this is a three-part story, and as it's, as you can guess, it's Harleen. So it's Harley Quinn we're talking about here and the Joker. Now, I'm not the biggest Har- Harley Quinn fan. Um, and in fact, this is from last year, this book. And I bought it last year, and I've oh, never read it. Right. <laughs> oh, I, so it's not even brand new. I, okay, no, I it, it, it came new. out last year. So it right. came out towards, I think, the last half of last year. Um, um, and like I said, I'm not the most biggest Har- Harley Quinn fan. She's definitely something that I never really jumped on the bandwagon with, and she's definitely been overexposed. Uh, I, to be honest, I wasn't even a big fan of her in the animated series. I know a lot of people love her in the animated series, but I always felt she was a character who wasn't really needed. But I mean, I know enough about her. I've obviously watched the animated series, I've read Mad Love, which is the classic. 
uh, sort of origin story of, of Harley. Now, this is a retelling of, of her origin. Uh, right. For a slightly more, as, as I said, it's an, a more adult or intended um, label. So, but it's not super. To me, it didn't seem much more dark or or more adult or intended than it would be in the normal comics. To be fair, maybe a little bit more gory. But this is a a story told in a first person narrative by Harley, um, and it basically tells her how she basically became the psychiatrist and got involved with the Joker, crossed paths with him initially. Then basically what the story is, is she is trying, she's got a theory around um, people being exposed to prolonged stressful environments can change the brain's empathy centre. And so she puts that down to why criminals become what they are and, and that like crime breeds crime and this kind of stuff. And she She'd done some research with some war soldiers and stuff like that and then started applying it to some different things. And so she basically wants a grant and she's going to be doing interviewing on lots of different people. And obviously one of them is a joker. Now, she comes across the joker before she starts this and and he terrorises her in her dreams and stuff. And she becomes a little bit obsessed with him. And then, then she... And so, I mean, everyone knows the broad story of Harley Quinn. She, yeah. She's a psychiatrist. She falls in love with him. And then she becomes this crazy thing. So over this free sit free issue book, it's that story. Right. Uh, but it's told in a much more realistic way, I think. And you can uh, and I was went going into it, I mean I brought this mainly for the art. The art is phenomenal. Um but going into it I was as you can see. Yeah, as you can see, thanks to the wonder of Jay's magical <laughs> editing skills. Um so I, I went into it thinking, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to really enjoy this or not. And it, I really did. And it was done in her narrative. And she's, um, she, it starts, she, you can see in her sort of personality, she's, she, she'd been, um, she hooked up with her college tutor and things like that. So you can sort of see this sort of addictive personality, this sort of authoritarian yeah. being pulled in. You can see the traits there. She played a bit more like an addict in the fact that she, um, she has to drink to get over the nightmares and to cope with her day to day in the um, asylum. Uh, and like I say, the relationship. I mean, the Joker is drawn like a beautiful man, like a you know, like a Twilight vampire, basically. Right. Um, he's a bit too you know like that. Um, he, he's not the Joker I would you know envision normally, but. Um, Straight away, you can see that he's playing her, um, but it's done in a way because I because because it was always a bit to me like I never really thought would someone really going in that profession, act, you know, that's not really likely that would happen, and and you know, the, all the safeguarding measures to stop something like that happening, but it sort of deals with it quite well. There's also a really great sub story around Harvey Dent and his origin. Oh, okay. And it talks about how he became Two Face, and the stories sort of cross over, um, okay. both before she goes into Arkham, and then obviously once he becomes Two Face, um, you get to see uh, there's issue two. You get a bit more of Poison Ivy, and again she looks amazing in this. I mean, I guess going back to Stepan, it was his name. Hopefully, I mean his sort of background. He's done quite a lot of stuff for like Image. And some independent comics. He did like you know, like the, a lot of the nineties like stuff where it's quite sexy women right. in it yeah. and stuff. So yeah, you yeah. can you can see from his art, but also he'd done a, a thing called Sunstone with his wife, and that is a very erotic BDSM series. Right. Uh, okay. <laughs> so because I thought, oh, I might try, check that out because I saw that he, you know he did something else. Cause, and I looked over, oh, <laughs> this is a bit naughty. <laughs> so I'll be reading that later. Um, but. Um, yeah, I mean, his art is phenomenal. And, and I mean, I would say it's not the most groundbreaking story in the world. It's not like Chain of the World, but it was a, a big surprise. And it made, actually, it's made, there's, there was a couple of mini series that came out at the end of last year involving the Joker and Harley, because they both had films. Um, the other one was uh, called Joker and Harley, and then there was one, um, which I can't remember what it's called, um, which. I basically am now going to read because I've just it's just got me a little bit more interested in the character. So uh, yeah, good. it was good. Do you want to give good. it a rating? Go on, 
how many uh, burgers would this one get? Well, if I break it down for you, I'd say the story would get three burgers, three tasty burgers. The art would get five tasty burgers. Okay, a big so, kahuna burger. But I guess wow. if you look at the whole package, that brings it down to a four tasty burgers. So not okay. quite a big kahuna burger, but Still the good, art though. in itself is. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, hey, definitely worth a read. Just quickly, if you um, you know, you said that you weren't a big uh, Harley Quinn fan initially. Mm. Um, so, what do you think of the Joker's new girlfriend punchline? Well, oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm obviously I've not read the issues yet because I don't right. think they've even come out with her in it yet. Um, yeah. But um, I, I don't need this in my life. Is is, is the honest answer? It really does not interest me. Right. You don't uh, joke to have a girlfriend. No, I like Joker being a weirdo on his own. Yeah. Um, but also, I mean, I don't mind him being having a girlfriend. But again, why? Why do you need that? I mean, I know yeah. in the comics they've really moved Harley away from the Joker for now. She's almost a good person, and she and the lesbian, right? That and that would le- happen. Yeah, and she's in a le- lesbian relationship with Poison Ivy and all this kind of stuff. So everything about. Harley that you knew from the beginning is not that you know she's not in love with Mr. Jane she's not um, a baddie anymore so no. again it's I don't know it's just I find they, they often do that with female characters though right like girls can't that be one. bad yeah girls yeah, can't that... be bad they can't be evil they've got to always become good I don't know yeah. um, that, I mean, that's not like... discussed another time it would be because again like Catwoman's had series in the past and she was supposedly a villain but yeah. know, not anymore yeah. Cool. All right. Well, that's a that's a good review there, Colin. Thank and, uh, you. I think that, that brings us to the end of our show this week. Oh. So before we go, let's quickly tell all the viewers and listeners where we can be found. Initially, uh, the the Facebook group, I guess, is where it started again. Um, so yeah. that's um, that's old chums geek chat group on Facebook. Share it with your friends and get more members because they would love to keep up to date with everything and also thank you to all the people who interact on that group it's it's constantly got stuff being posted and people talking and sharing the things that they're into which is just wonderful um and uh and we're also on, on twitter and instagram right colin yes and you want me to tell you the addresses <laughs> yes i do you? um <laughs> That's good because good. I know, we know the addresses off the, <laughs> off the top of my head. I don't need to look them up. They are old chums geek chat at gmail.com for email. Have you done that already? Yeah. No. Uh, um, also, we've got old chum geek chat at, no, sorry, at old chum geek chat for the Instagram and Twitter. No, for Instagram. And for Twitter, it is old. Chum, geek, chum ch- no, one, right? No, yeah, geek ch one, which is shortened because it was too long for Twitter. Right, and you can also find us on the <laughs> Taylor Network podcasts, another place um, that has lots of great podcasts that you can check out as well. It's an amazing podcast, yeah. Um, and uh, and and that's it, right? That's all the places. Yeah, much. Yeah, that's it. We're keeping it short. Keeping so it that's short. Let's and, not keep going on about it. No, no, no. And where I can we find you, us. Colin? Hmm? Where can we find you individually? Oh, Crappy Cardboard Cosplay on Instagram or Captain Colin on Twitter. And you can find me on Instagram at SpartanX1 and at 1933 Eagles on Twitter. All right. So, looks like that's it for this week. I'm mm-hmm. sure that Colin's got a, a wonderful rainbow filled sign off for you guys today. But um, from me, uh, until next time, see you later. Transmute! Transmute! <laughs> <laughs>